live? Can I post the link? Already? Yeah, go ahead, post the link. We have one minute, but um. Can they hear us through this one minute? Check. No escucho nada. Me acaban de cortar. Check, Me acaban check. de cortar. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, so that's a, a common theme on my videos is I usually start singing for some reason. Lo peor es que no me sé la rola. Lo peor es que no cantas bien. Pero estoy bien chido. Es lo peor de todo. Yo nada más quiero que sepan que el episodio de ayer estaba bien chido. ¿Cuál episodio de ayer? Cuando yo nomás decía que sí. Who's breathing into the mic? You are. Who was the one clicking for real night? One. Hello, everybody. We're back live here from the studio uh, in Conroe, Texas. We'll be... Uh, on Facebook Live, and um, yeah, so today we have a special guest. Today uh, we have Giovanni Zuniga, also known as Joba Film. He is a photographer and entrepreneur. He loves sports, loves all things about sports, basketball, soccer, football. He's very talented and very unique individual. Um, known him pretty much half of my life and uh no I'm in so yeah so uh how are you today we just finished the workout yes um well first of all thanks for the for the proper introduction um just finished the workout so feeling uh feeling good a little sore hit chest today um and we're here now go ahead chest namas puro chest Chest, uh, shoulders, and triceps. We hit upper body today. Upper we, body. We pulled the ray. Nice, yeah. nice. So I did a... Uh, Arms. Just in case you guys were curious, and so you guys are asking me what I did. I did uh, biceps and shoulders and the abs. You went like that. I immediately thought something else. Spider-Man? No. That's bicep. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so so what? tell us, what, what do you do right now? What are you doing? What are you uh, working on? Um, well, this is my second time being here. Last time was more of entertainment, as we stated. Right. Um, this time I'll give you guys more of a proper introduction as to who I am and why I believe you guys have me here. Uh, so I'll give a little bit more of a background story, an origin, as uh, X-Men would say. I like that. So I, I'm i just a, a curious person. I've always been uh, uh, the odd, odd duck I've always questioned things. I've always been curious about how things work, how people have achieved the things they have achieved. Um, that that was something that was instilled in me through my parents, and then I think it got it got enhanced even more when I moved here to the United States, and um, I didn't speak the language, uh, so. One of the things that I did to kind of like start picking up on the language was reading. And I started reading a lot just to to Im help me improve my, you know, my communication skills, not knowing that I was doing something that was going to help me out in the long run for a lot of different things. So as many kids do, I started reading those Goosebump books, Ooh, finished books. all of those. And that was like really my introduction to reading. I just like the covers. I the never read them. You never read them? They were so they were, good. They were so good. They were they were good for what I could read and understand, which was like a quarter of it. They were good. Um, yeah, I didn't read a book until after college. I think that explains a lot. Yeah, go ahead, finish your story. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's kind of like what introduced me to reading. Um, in I was in fifth grade. Um, and then after that, it was just like, what else can I read? Uh, and that's kind of like what began my my curiosity into like many things that I've done throughout my you know my lifetime. Um, we were talking about how I've been in many different industries. I've done a lot of different things. Uh, they're mostly related to sales. Um, you were like in the car dealership business for a while. So that was the, my last job. I was a, a car salesman, a new car salesman at Gullah Ford here in Conroe. 
still recommend the spot. Uh, I I really love the environment. I love the people I work with. I I love my job, but I personally am at this point in my life. I'm a I'm a creative person, and I can't I couldn't stand myself sitting there waiting, waiting. for people to come to me, and me have to do the sell. Uh, with that said, I think that was that last job was one of the reasons why I decided to to really focus on just being creative just because I, I was not fulfilled. So we'll, we'll get into a lot of different things and kind of like philosophies, but uh, fulfillment was one of the things that I was really searching for and like just making a sale wasn't, wasn't fulfilling for me. Um, so kind of going back to the origin, you know, I've, I've done sales most of my life. Um, I've worked in machine shops. I worked at a bank. Um, at a bank? Yeah, what I worked bank? at a... First National First Bank. First National Bank. Mm-hmm. What? He's Why are you looking at me? What well, should we ask you? He was stuck, so I had <laughs> answered for Yeah, him. I completely forgot. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I've worked see, there. This guy worked at Subway. You see? Yeah, I mean, I everybody know. knows that. I was there forever. Yeah. Forever I, and then some. Everybody doesn't know that. Everybody. So That's watching this right now. It's one person. <laughs> I mean, 1,000 persons. So, actually, while you were at Gullo, you were still making videos. And that was was that still part of like the 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 creative in you still wanting to come out still like like you said I, I'm tired of just sitting out, well not tired but you know I couldn't wait and stay still. Did you actually as a young kid were did your parents ever t- tell you that that you can't stay still like you're always doing something? Um, so growing up, um, my parents encouraged me to do different things. Um, when I was five years old, my dad's been a musician his whole life, so he would always take me to. Know. He would always take me to his uh, rehearsals. Oh, and, those were great. I went to a couple of them. And then coming back from one of the rehearsals when I was five years old, uh, he said I was singing. Well, my sister and I were singing, uh, my younger sister. And he said he heard me sing with um, with some kind of direction, like musical direction. Okay. Because we all sing and, you know, we all sound great in our heads. Right. But certain people can, can kind of, like, pick up on things or... Um, I guess the tones, the tunes up, down. Correct, correct. When to go deep, when to go high. When to start singing, when to stop. Like, musically, there's there's formulas to everything. So, you know, after 16 beats, you start, uh, you know that, um, you know... 16 beats of singing then you have like a hook or whatever like right. there's a formula to everything and we don't know those things but sometimes people just pick up on them right. just out right. of like nature uh and he noticed that i picked up on that so he started giving me singing lessons himself um and then from there i participated on um on uh i think it was mother's day was the first thing that i did right and i sang um in front of my whole school for all the mothers and then that that just kind of like became like a normal thing for me, like being in front of people, uh, performing. Um, I was always encouraged to, you know, to be different in a good way. So th- that w- that was kind of always instilled in me. Coming back to like the, the Golo thing, when I was there, I just felt like that was a job. And I don't know if, if a lot of people can resonate with this, but... When when you're going to work and it's it's just a job, most things, even if you love them, they tend to just become a job. Correct. But there's a certain sense of fulfillment when you do something that you really love and enjoy that you don't get out of just going and, you know, I, I don't want to say anything in particular, but when you're doing something that you don't enjoy at all and you're doing Correct. it just out of necessity, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. Right. Everybody has, you know, different needs and if if your family depends on you to to bring the bread home you have to bring do it at all costs but i i would encourage people to if you feel like you're you're in a place where you're not feeling fulfilled um there's so many ways to look at it and maybe like try to do something different with your life correct correct yeah it comes a point where it, i guess it stops being financial at a certain point right like you said it was no longer like financial like you probably still need it to pay your bills but at that point you're like hey i'm i'm not all the way fulfilled as you said so what made you at what point do you like all right t- this is my last week my last month now i gotta focus here so i'd love to say that you know 
and, and this is going to go this is going to go further into like the conversation but as as humans we love to say oh i i made a decision or oh i did but most of the times it's like when shove when push comes to shove and you have to make a decision that's whenever like things usually change so for me it was covid covid hit uh the the dealership slowed down a lot and then since i had been there for like six seven months i was one of the new guys uh they told me yeah so i was laid off i was laid off uh about a month later i got a call back from them or i don't know how long and it was just like a decision had to be made and my decision was like i don't care how bad things get mm -hmm. i'm not going back like i i just want to do whatever i feel fulfilled doing and we were talking about that you know with you yesterday um how you have to make decisions and even if they they cost you something um you know when when you really want to do that you you fight and you 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 know you claw your way to the point that you want to get no matter how bad things get correct so for me it was just a decision of like i want to feel like i'm doing something versus i'm just going to a job right and it, that was more of a personal thing um and as as with anything uh we'll get into like the business side of what i do but um all businesses are up and down just because you you're a business owner doesn't mean you're necessarily like hitting it right off the right. bat but i think that with proper um with a proper idea and following the steps that have already been laid out by people that are already successful at that thing if you are good at noticing what somebody has done and following those patterns you're easier to get there than if you just want to make all the mistakes that are to be made correct we'll talk about uh we when we're in 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 our personal chats we we say you know like what wealthy people say and one of the things is like fail cheap and fail fast i've heard that recently in the last few weeks mm -hmm. so, so from my experience like i had like uh there's jobs that you like because you're in the industry so i'm a designer uh i was i was in an agency right and i loved what i do i love the work mm -hmm. but there's certain times where um even the job that you have like as a dream like it becomes something that you don't want and it could be many reasons like management there's not enough money in mm -hmm. in it um many many things and there's comes to a point where you have to like leave like you said so even if you're like in your dream job it it some it becomes something that you don't want um and you have to make that decision before it gets too too sour you know or before things go bad um you have to make that decision and most of the time like you said it's because of pain or pleasure that you make these decisions mm -hmm. um too much pain or you want it so so bad that you'll do it um usually it's like whenever you don't do anything it's because there's not enough of one or the other yeah right. um in my previous job like they gave me a raise um i was the lead you know but it just wasn't uh, i was doing everything that i wanted to do as a career but it just wasn't enough there was too much pain to to continue it and and you know even if it's just a job like there's still other circumstances that uh that that will supersede that the the pleasure of you doing what you love you doing the job that you want to do you know for me it was management for you it might be like you know the the mundane or the routine of selling cars yeah so uh, that's where we go back and i say like usually a job will become a job no matter how much you love it um but i think at that point it's like you know your your morals your standards um what um what you accept what you want to to do with your life who you are as a person are you done learning right um so at that point management becomes a really big part of the picture so on paper everything makes sense oh right. I'm, i'm doing my dream job i i graduated from college i got this job i keep getting races um i'm doing um race is like as in money um the mics I heard are racist <laughs> i was like okay so you you're you're being monetarily compensated for your job um 
but maybe something is not there that you are you know you are wanting to be like you're stuck there you're not personally growing um you think management is doing things a certain way that like like we talked about earlier like you've seen other people be successful by doing different things right but the the lead is not making those decisions because they It's gonna vary for everything, but like some people will make personal decisions for their business, and that's gonna be based on who they are. Correct. Yeah, so I think it goes both ways. Like uh, you can be your own boss, you can do whatever, you can be living your dream, but you're not making any money. It's and time you're happy. It's time, and you're happy, but you're not like there's priorities, and then there's responsibilities that you have to provide. That it's a sacrifice uh, of your happiness, you know. Like going to school is not fun, yeah. You know, uh, to some, some people love going to school, right? But like, you're gonna have to sacrifice to 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 do what you have to do, and then you eventually, um, like for me, like I love the sacrifice. If that makes sense, like I love doing the sacrifice because I know that that's where success is for me. For other people, it might it might not be, but for me, that's where it is. That's where I know that progress will be made is in the sacrifice. So let me ask you this: So, at what point, let's say I'm working a job and I'm not happy because of management, but what if it's me and it's not really management, right? So, like people listening could be like, "Well, Tommy doesn't let me do what I want, and I want to do this and I want to do this, but I can't." Like, at what point is it you yourself, your personal? Like this, I'm not internally happy, and is it just like I'm just whining at this point, and am I changing things? That, that's a good a good point. Does that, of view. that make sense? Because you, you mm. we're telling them that right, like you didn't feel good, but it's like okay, is it really me inside, or is it just because I don't like him and I don't like how they're? So, uh, I, like I always tell you guys, I am the pr easiest person to lie to. Ooh. So we will tell ourselves the story we want to hear a thousand times over before we accept that we are wrong. So that's where introspecting comes in. That's where you having to take yourself out of the situation and really look at things like logically, like are, are they the problem or am I just whining? Are, are they asking too much of me or do I just not want to do the work? There you go. So one of the things that I like about what he said is like, that's a mindset thing. So, a lot of people get stuck in boxes or they put themselves in boxes like, oh, I'm not a morning person. Oh, I'm not Good this or, oh, I am this. So one of the things that he touched on is like enjoying the, the, the difficulty in something. So just, just to give you guys like a, an example of like the reason why I think the way I think is like, It's not because I'm smart. I've never claimed to be smart. I just like to pay attention. And I usually just repeat things that's that have smart. already been said. Right. So uh, I, I heard somebody say that if you endure like difficulty in, in, in anything for a prolonged period of time, you tend to become that who you say you are not. So, oh, I'm not a morning person, but I'm waking up early every single day and I don't enjoy it. But I've been doing this for five years. Right. But you are a morning person. Correct. Oh, I'm not a patient person, but I've been doing the same thing to get to the same goal that I want consistently for three years. I just want it now. But if you keep doing the same thing, you are a patient person. Right. So that that's like a like a belief. Limiting beliefs are things that like we we touched on last time, and we'll we'll kind of bring it back a little bit more serious this time. So we are. We are creatures of habit, and we tend to just repeat things that have already been said, uh, whether they're good or bad. I, I forgot um, where I heard this, but humans are very adapted, and they'll adapt to good things, and they'll adapt to, to bad things. So you can get used to, to bad situations really fast. Right. And if you 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 start building a, like a negative mindset of yourself, you start becoming a um a victim of of your reality you're gonna get stuck in that spiral and it's really Correct. hard to get out i very, i, I very have hard. to i have to there's a there's a mental health condition of 
um, the victim falling in love with this predator. I forgot the, the terminology of it, but you fall in love with the pain so much that you want it, even if it's bad for you. Um, it's, it's a term. I forgot the term. It's like some, I can't grasp it, but, uh, you fall in love with the, with the, with being a victim and being, uh, in pain and in suffering so much that that's, you fall in love with it. That's what is your norm. Correct. That becomes normal to you. And, and that's, that's who you become is that, um, and it's just part of, um, what you were talking about. Right. And I know a lot of people like that. I think. A lot of people always tell me, right, you're always positive. You're always like, and it's not that I'm always positive. It's just I I, I don't want to think negative, right, because then I'm going to be negative, And then it's going to like, I'm going to fall into that. So my, my, I don't know if I can say names here, but uh, certain persons are always like, man, like, I tell them like, why are you already mad? Like, it's a- eight in the morning, bro. Like, you're talking about Luis. <laughs> You know, like, like lining up, like, oh, it's because this, and then there was traffic, and then I got to work, and my boss, and I'm like, okay, like, think about it the other way, you know, like, hey, you at least made it, you, you woke up on time, you didn't wake up too late, you know, like, and I'm like, how do you do that? I'm like, bro, I don't know how, you know, just do it, like, don't, just like you focus on the negative, I focus on the positive, and, and, and then he's always like that, and he's always in that circle, in that circle, in that circle, and it's hard to get out, and no matter how many posts I send him, how, how many things I do, he stays in there. And I mean, what, what would you guys think would be like certain things that someone with that is it mentality mindset, or that mindset mindset that could, could do attitude. to maybe get I out mean, of it? You, you, mindset has been like a mainstream uh, word, but it's just your attitude and your perspective mixed together. Like, how's your attitude about certain things? You know, is this glass half full or is it, gla- is it half empty? It's about you know? three quarters full. It's about three quarters. At, uh, one quarter. <laughs> I guess it doesn't make sense if it's three quarters. Yeah. So it's like it's your perspective on life, right? Like what's what's your what are you telling yourself in the world? Like what are you telling yourself about the world and how reality is? Are you telling yourself a good story or are you telling yourself a a bad story? Okay, now, now I do have to to add to that. It's it's easy for us to say that coming out of a place of where we already have that mindset. So one of the things that I've learned the the older I've gotten is having sympathy for people because we don't know what they've been through. Correct. And I, I've been I've been guilty in the past of just saying, oh, you can change this about yourself. You, It's a mindset thing. Definitely. But I, I've, I've come to realize that um, it's, it's a lot harder than just change your mindset, you know. You, you have to learn to, to understand people. I think that's where listening to people is is very important right um and wanting to help versus just judging is oh. is a big part of um uh, of that you know for me like i said my my parents always encouraged me to be different in a good way um do you think I, you're different in a good way right now um well i i would tell myself i am but i mean you guys would be a, a better judge of that because you guys see what i do or you guys get to you've gotten to know me a little bit more personally um so like i said we can always paint a picture of ourselves and right. be whatever we want it to be but at some point but based on what you just said it doesn't matter what what we think right we right. have to listen to you so if you just told us that you feel you're good then you're good regardless of our judgment right now right to me you're horrible to him you're good <laughs> but to you it's is is what matters is what you think and what you feel no yeah well uh, a serial killer will think they're doing the right thing just because that's what they feel they need to do, that doesn't mean it's the right thing. But kind of going back to the the whole, um, you know, mindset thing. Well, he was talking about uh, just to ground the conversation before we kind of go everywhere. He was talking about what can he do to help this person. Correct. Um, or these about, people. Oh, this, the, these in people general. that, uh, in general, that are seeking for help. Obviously, because he's talking about it and saying, "How, Ray? How?" How are you so positive? You Mm -hmm. know, so he asked, how can, how can, uh, what can you tell these people so they can, uh, be more positive through, through experience? I think the only thing you can do is lead by example. So it's, you can shove, so you can't tell them anything you, you can, you can tell them, but they're more likely to, to follow, um, 
follow what you are preaching if you are living like that. So if they and, and if if you just scream at somebody, oh, yeah. change your life, change your life, change. Not you, you're not enjoying this. Ch David Goggins. <laughs> yeah. So some people need that. Right. So, some so, people so will you know? wake up from that. You don't know. But so the, you try different. The best All thing three? you can do. Here's here's my More point. Three, I think. My point so of view. Limited. It, it's unlimited. But my point of view is you should never tell people how to live their life. You should live the your life the way you want it to be. And if people want to, to follow what you are doing. They'll pick at it. Yeah. Or, or so you that. should never tell people, oh, you need to do this. You should. You, well, <laughs> you should is still based on your opinion of what mm. you would want your life to be. Um, and he gave me, when I, when I got out of high school, he had already been a year in, into his deep dive into finding out, you know, what he enjoyed, who he was. And he gave me this audio book from Tony Robbins. Okay. And in, in that, in that, uh, audio book, uh, Tony Robbins said, um, you can build a highway to happiness and a dirt and a, and a dirt road to anger or depression or so that's where you're talking about like you wake up and you're immediately happy right no you don't no okay not not always right but but there's no like today like i was telling you earlier right i slept more today and i woke up like down mm -hmm. and i was like I'm, i can just lay here for the next hour and a half before i gotta get up and get ready to go to work or whatever or i can just get up and go to the gym anyway right and i got up and went to the gym so that that's that's the mindset thing so a lot of people built the highway to anger and depression and it takes them a long, uh, it takes a lot of things for them to be happy Positive. Mm -hmm. and just very little things for them to get upset or, and that, that may have a lot to do with how they grew up. Um, you know, we are merely like, a we are nothing but a sum of all of our experiences Seriously. and how we were exposed to certain things, the people we were exposed to. So we can't sit here and judge people that are like that. Correct. Um, but I think, like I said, and I don't think we necessarily should tell them how they should live their life. Right. But, but I think it we is can their do... responsibility to change anything that they want to change. Right. Correct. So, so it all comes within regardless. It, it, it has to, So one thing that I used to say is you, you can't help somebody that doesn't want help. Right. That that goes with mental health, with addiction, with progress, with diet, with uh, spiritual. Like so it has to come in within. So that's why that's why I asked earlier, what, what can you tell that person to try to find that within? Because in my – so earlier what you said is listening to people and hearing and understanding where they came from, right? But – to me, my, my train of thought, right, is more like, um, yeah, I'm going to listen to you, and, and I'm going to have your back, and I'm going to let you desahogarte y decirme lo que quieres y eso, but okay, so you still got to get the stuff done, right? Like, like so I, I I don't keep that concept of just listening and feeling sorry for them, and like, ah, okay, now I know why you think that way. Regardless, like, I don't know where I heard it, but it's like everybody had has had a shitty childhood a shitty past or whatever right we all have everybody has a story a sob mm -hmm. story or this or that whatever right but oh i think within they have to just get up and decide one day and just like change it because so, you know then it just becomes not annoying but it just becomes like um repetitive right like kind of like okay you're, you're still in that circle so so i think that that's I a very no yeah. that's that's yeah. good that's a, a really good point so that's i think that's what friends are for Yes. And at some point, you have to realize that you have to stop becoming an enabler. So you you have to stop enabling people to double down on, on what they think of themselves, of how they feel. Yes, you should listen, and yes, you should, you know, sympathize with them. But you can't allow them their whole life to be a certain... I mean, you could, but if you really love somebody, you're, you're going to try to, to do what, whatever's in your power to want to help that person. So that's where the difference of... But that's 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 i don't know if that's true because um your mother loves you your family loves you but there are habits and traditions that are stronger than than that mm -hmm. and you're not going to say oh my mother doesn't love me because she feeds me bad food you know it's like there's things that go deeper than love 
and affection. There's like rooted things that are just way beyond what we think as love. You know, like all of our Mexican culture loves us. Like my family loves us. Everybody loves us. But it's like here to say, oh, if you really love me, you would feed me the right type of food. Correct. But they don't. But doesn't mean that they don't love you. Correct. They're just there are things that are. But that's just lack of knowledge. Even if they know, like it's not. Like even if they know, like it's 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 rooted in into something way deeper than than love. Culture. I'd culture. say culture. Yeah. Right. Like. So at at some point, um, and and this goes to you know, I think this goes out to everybody. We we can't blame our parents for doing what they did whether it was quote unquote good or bad that's right. just they are just doing the best that they could i don't think we should blame um our circumstances you know how we grew up with where we grew up how at some point like Luis said you have to take responsibility for your life and yes you could follow those same traditions yes you could follow that same culture um and at some point you you have to realize and i i hate to say that you have to it's just like some people do and then they make the decision whether they want to to keep going better it better it or not right i feel like you have to in a sense you have to well no you have to if you want to right some people hey i'm happy just doing my basic necessities i eat i don't care about nothing cool keep Mm -hmm. going Right, like, but oh, I think we said that earlier, right? It's, it comes when, when people start complaining, then it's like, okay, so either you accept who you are and you and you want to stay in that in that circle that you're doing, and you're paying your bills and you're taking care of your family and whatever. Okay, cool. But once you start saying, oh, I'm out of shape. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, I, I can't take this trips. Oh, it's, it's this. Okay, well then, at that point, then you have to do something about it because nine by and like Jordan Peterson says like if you open up for discussion you open up yourself to be get your feelings hurt right because those are ideas and they're going to be conflicting if you're especially if somebody that's going to be at a different mindset than you are or a different belief or a different anything um, then that's when that happens like yeah you can you you can do whatever you want but once you start complaining you're asking people for your feedback and their advice um if 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 you're not then you know you wouldn't be complaining and at at that point i feel like there's big influence uh, in like who your circle is definitely so you're gonna be in the circle of enablers where you're gonna tell you oh well you know Things could always be worse, right? It's like, like oh, I don't have money. Oh, cool, but your your friends go out every day to eat and and spend money, but then you're complaining that you don't have money, but you're in that group of friends that just spend money, right? Or I used to be with a group of friends that that you know, like you know, let's say there's ten of us, right? And there's seven of us that are in good positions, you know, and then the other three aren't, but but they hang out with us. And then they complain that they don't have money or they can't do certain things. But it's like, well, you shouldn't be in the circle. I mean, that sounds horrible, right? But if you canceled. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard an example yesterday of uh, these, these people <laughs> that were going out to eat. And this person was complaining that whenever, let's say, us three go out to eat, we split the bill four way, three ways. And, and say you guys would be drinking a lot, you know, and I don't drink. You know, I thought to myself, yeah, that's not fair that, you know, she gets to, you know, only buy her drink of Coke and it's like three ninety nine, and everybody else is drinking. and Crown and Coke. Yeah, like $40, you know, whatever, $50 drinks, and then I have to pay for that. You know, she was complaining about that. And then I, I thought about myself and I was like, well, every time I go out now, I, I'm now. okay with... Yeah, now that I'm in a better position, like I'm okay with covering the bill. You know, it's it's an honor for me to cover the bill. Um, if we go out, let's say once a month or twice a month, it would be an honor for me to cover the bill. Correct. But there's certain people that um, that would want to just, you know, say, "Oh no, I'm not in that position." Like, 
she's letting me pay for me. Correct. Uh, and I think both of them are, are right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, like, me, when I was younger, it, if I knew I didn't have much, like, if he's, if, if let's say, Giovanni's paying, and then he orders something that's 12 bucks, I'm going to get something that's 12 or below. Right? But that was just me. <laughs> right? Like, he's not going to get something, and then I'm going to be like, oh, give me samplers, you know, give me two of these, and give me, you know, that, like, but, again, that all comes within well, me. Where did you get that from? I think it was just me, myself, like, um, I think I've always been, like, like, um, como se dice, imprudente. Like, I don't want, like, like, you're already helping me out, right? But I'm not going to be, like, take advantage of you more, right? Mm. Like, hey, Ray, it's on me. Let's all go. Okay, mm. cool. You know? And I think also would be when I would do it to people, right? And I'd be like, hey, let's go. Don't worry about it, man. I got you. And then they're like, dang, this guy just ordered all this? Like, like, like in my mind, right? And I'm like, all right, dije que le iba a invitar, so I will. But it's like, geez, like, you know, like, como he just earlier, like, like it's not fair, but but I guess I didn't set a limit. Projecting your beliefs on other, and people. I think it just depends where you're at, right? Because uh, I heard um, the story this this morning of Andrew Tate. We hope we don't get canceled. But we've been canceled multiple times. <laughs> it's okay. He went out on a date with this girl, and she was the one saying the story. She's mm -hmm. like, "Oh yeah, we went out. He was super gentleman, super <clears throat> this. We got the fanciest drinks, the fanciest everything." Um, and then he ordered me the XXL, um, Uber, right. The best of the best. And then he sent me off on my way and I was like, that would, you know, th that's how I want to treat my friends. Like I want to be able to say, you can get the best of the best of whatever you want in this menu. You know, I mean, what's going to be like a $40 steak, you know, but are he's you not gonna go over. I'm glad I've gonna, had this relationship with you for years. He, now. He's not gonna go he's over. Gonna pay over the balance, you know. He's never gonna go over the, you know. He's not gonna be the LeBron James that spends a hundred thousand in a bar. Yeah. Right. You but know? are you enabling me now? Because enabling I'm very basic. What? My my job's basic, and tú me vas a invitar. So it's like, heck yeah. yeah. Like I don't gotta work extra. I got a buddy that's gonna take care of me now. Oh, um, then yeah, then maybe, you will become yeah. that guy that you were just talking about. Correct. Mm. So, but uh, if I'm that guy already, like I don't care. Right. Like I'm I'm happy with my part time job, paying my bills. Yeah, you probably. Then, um, this probably sounds bad, but you probably wouldn't be my friend. Oof. Or it's. it's so, I'll, I'll have to correct you on that because I know you you don't just cut people off like that, but you do have friends that you do certain things with. And other friends that you do other things with. Right. So Correct. we were talking about this morning. You'll become that friend that I like to have over with uh, the family for fajitas because I know you behave well and you're funny. But maybe whenever we go out and we do this other thing, uh, I'm not going to think of you right away. Oof. So right. Th there's so you, you know, pick and choose. You, you can enable people by always paying for them. Or you can be your friend and be like, "Hey, do you need some help?" Yeah, I don't think all. Or you can just cut people them. off. But you can't. You can't uh, ask him for help because now you're offending me. What do you mean I need help? Why do I need help? If going back to what he said, if you op if you open up the dialogue, ah, okay, okay. then you open up Correct. for Correct. you know your feelings to get hurt. And by that he means uh, for me to tell you what you don't want to hear. Gotcha. Right. So COVID happened, right? And then you're like, "All right, I'm not going back to that." Right, your mind switch. Was it a mind switch? Um, n yeah, let's just say it was. It's just like kind of sort of like. So then you started grinding. You started looking for shoots, looking for videos, looking for weddings, looking for. <coughs> for what? Well, what exactly do you do? Just photography. Um, I video? do. I do photography and video. Um, I wouldn't choose the word grinding. Um, I think that's like a very. Uh, modern modern term of pop culture is Gary V came out and is like hustle culture always grinding never not working never I mean you work or you don't work so are you part him. of the uh, hustle culture I I don't advise I don't advise that and that'll kind of go a little bit deeper into like my personal beliefs and why I got there and how I got there um, but is one term better than the other? Which one? Hustle, grind, never not working. <laughs> I think they all encompass the same, the same mindset of work hard no matter what. Um, 
at a sacrifice of your well-being of your um yeah at the sacrifice of your well-being because you can be going nine to five and be grinding every day right you can be very efficient from nine to five to, to add to that i'm not saying that that's a bad thing. no 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 I'm just i'm not because i feel like when people speak up against that terminology it is always um looked upon as oh i'm hating on that i i think that's a bad thing i think people should work i think people um you know should i think people want that wants to better themselves uh depending on where they're at in life and where where they're at um you know in their mindset intellectually the the skills they have mm-hmm. there are certain things that they have to do um that is going to get them to the next level if they want to so for some people they they you know you kind of have to um know who you are and if you if we talked about this yesterday if you know you're that person that uh, is more than likely not going to be self-motivated to go out and do these things. Um, then what's going to be better for you, quote unquote, and that's, you know, just using as what general public will agree is like make you more money mm-hmm. is go to a um, a job where there's going to be structure where you have to follow these things and you can be very good at that job and end up, you know, being rewarded very well for that. Gotcha. So at that point, you knew you you could do that. You um, didn't want the structure no more. COVID happened. And you're like, okay, now my mentality is I need to go work. So here's 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 a thought to that. Um, there is such a thing as a starving artist. So that's a very real thing. Starving artist. Can you? S- a starving artist is a person who uh, is a purist and thinks of just art. And mostly art can come from a place of chaos Mm. where there's no structure, where you just. um, I think a starving artist just means that you're not getting paid for what you're doing as your art. Yeah. Yeah. So you expanded on it a little bit too much. And that, you know, terms that are hard to understand. But like, it's like you just you you go and you do what you what your passion is and then you don't get paid for it. You know, and then, then you starve. And then that could be a singer, a writer, a, a painter, a musician, a photographer, any of these creative fields that just don't get paid. And it's because of the lack of understanding in business, social uh, dynamic, entrepreneurship, all these other other uh, fields that sales that we don't know. Um, that's why they're starving artists or to, their art just sucks. To To add to that. It's been proven time and time again that those people have become very influential. So were you a starving artist at this time? Is this what No, because I didn't go to not having any structure. Okay. So just because of, of like I said, my background and always being curious, I understood that um I mean just to to throw this out there, we live in an amazing time in an amazing place. But I think Every generation has lived in an amazing time. I have to go to the restroom. Thanks, thanks for letting yeah, us know. Yeah, but digitally, um, but for, if you're in the '40s, you were living at the best time, right? Radio and TVs were coming out. I mean, the '50s, the '60s, like so. I think every generation is living at the best time because we are humans, or whatever the proper way of saying that we want more and we want to continue to grow and get better and smarter and this and that, right? So I think every generation is... So like right now, I, I keep hearing a lot of people and Gary Vee and some of them like, you're in the internet, boom, like you need to be doing... Okay, so they were in the 80s too. They were in... Well, the, the, that was the internet, right? When that started. Now we're in the, in the next phase, whatever the phase might be. And then before that, you were in the radio thing like or the the TV thing. So I think every time... like. If you want to, no matter what the time, what the date, or what it is, you can get things done that you need to get done. In in sales, they teach you to say that the time is always now. Correct. But that's more of a, you're playing a game. But no. Because, I mean, we understand inflation, we understand all these things, and we understand that, uh, well, yeah, you, there's a lot of, you know, sales gimmicky that goes behind that. Right. But in reality, the time is always now. Correct. So going back to what you said, you know, like, and and I feel like a lot of us are guilty of this, myself included, is what they call paralysis by analysis, where you think about things and 
you you postpone action because you're thinking of how you're gonna make it perfect. And I feel like a lot of people that are perfectionists kind of like will relate to this. Um, kind of what we talked about yesterday. The time is now. I, I forgot who said this, but it was like it took me. Uh, I wanted to do something, and it took me four years of me thinking that I wanted to do it, and then I googled it and I did it in eight hours. Correct. So it's like it took me four years and eight hours to finally do the thing. What the podcast? It's like all this. How long did we talk about all this? We talked about it for and a even very this, long time. You talked about it with them, and I talked about it with some other people way right. before. And it wasn't until I said, okay, let's just buy it. No, 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 no. Well, it wasn't until something happened, and Fight. I was like, okay, Fight. let's just buy Fight. it. And so I said, let's just tell me what I need to buy and give me a list, and then we started. Right. Okay. That's good. Sometimes no, the, the you need story, help. The story has some, to be good because okay, it's written now. Sometimes, sometimes you need somebody that's going to take action with you. So that's that's where I was telling you like a lot of a lot of times is just fear of sucking at something will prolong how when you get it done. Oh, it, yeah. But it's just the thought of it, because once you actually do it, you realize, oh, it took me three months to get this started. Um, but I got it done in, you know, 15 hours. Correct. So COVID happened. You were starving. You weren't a starving artist. And then what? Um by by not a starving artist, I, I say that because you can live off of what you do. And the reason why I did that is because I was not new to the industry. Um, like I said, I've I've most of my life I've I've wanted to to learn new things, um, find out how we can get to 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 certain positions and then I just learned like I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, I'm just following the 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 right. plan that's already been laid out by more successful people. So I looked at my industry, I looked at what I wanted to do. I had to remove the artist from the business owner and understand, okay, well I need to focus on this because when somebody is looking for X, Y, or C, they're looking for an expert. So you can be um, a jack of all trades and a master of none, or you can focus on one thing and become really good at that. Right. Um, and I decided to to double down on that. So for me, it was photography. Mm -hmm. You hearing noises? Yeah. Um, for me, it was photography, and I started investing in myself. So every time I would get a, a gig, um, you know, you set your money apart for bills or for whatever you need to do. And uh, at the beginning, uh, once I had already made my first investment of a camera, let's put it that way, um, I started. How much are how much are cameras? It varies. Uh, you can you can start working today with four hundred bucks. So I buy a camera, four hundred bucks, ready to go. Boom! You so are you're a photographer. And a professional. Yeah, yeah, if you call yourself a paid, professional, yeah. all you have to do is put professional in front of your name and you're ready to go. As long as you get paid for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. wasn't there a time where you needed certain hours to be like an expert? It's oh, is that expert? Hours. Is that expert? Yeah. Okay, my man. That so, was professional. Sorry. What I did instead of going out and buying more gear is I started learning about the crap. So I would buy workshops. I mean, I would go to workshops. I would buy, um, you know, online courses. Um, I started looking at the people whose work I, I really liked. And I would find out when they were coming to my city. I would go to those workshops. And for me, so everything um, is about time, right? So I can pay somebody to teach me something and have them sit down with me for five hours. Or I can get this information for free but it's going to take me seven months to get the same information that I will get with this exactly. person Correct. that I'm sitting down for five hours. And it very, again, very that, proud friend here. Very, <laughs> very proud. And again, this is not something that I came up with. It's just things that I've read. And right. So I decided to, to go to the, my first workshop with this guy that I really liked. And I thought it was expensive. Uh, I thought, you know, this is a lot of money for a day and a half. But when you go there and 
and you sit down and I, I personally went thinking the workshop was for me, not for the 10 other people that were there. That's good. That's so a good way to see it. I went there and I had a bunch of questions written down, things that I personally wanted to know. So when it came time to, to him, we talked about composition, we talked about lighting. And then when we came time to like editing, there was a lot of things that I was slacking on uh, as far as like, um, like the the software side during quick quick thing during this phase are you are you taking jobs currently are you doing little small okay yes yeah, so that's what i'm saying I, I was taking on jobs and i was reinvesting that money on myself i like that um so when i got to sit down with him um I, and i was asking these questions that i already had uh written down what he said was like give me a minute i'll spend some time with you because i i had already come prepared and i was asking questions that these other guys were not asking so, so for me, that was the, like that. the best investment that I that I ever made was going to that first workshop because um, the amount that that I paid, like the ROI on that, was exponential. What is ROI? The return on investment. Which so means let's say you you spend five hundred bucks, spend five hundred bucks, and what you get in return from that um, should be more than what you invested in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's that's kind of like what what you know has changed the course for me, and that's why I think I went from leaving my job to to doing what I enjoy full time and not being that starving artist is mm -hmm. wanting to keep you know bettering my craft and learning new things, um, you know having friends like this guy that's that's exposed to like a a big company, you know. I you you're, you're a business guy? owner. Yeah, guy. Well, both of you guys. You, you're the one. No, during this phase, it's him. I moves. just came in the picture like a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, moves, but but here's the thing, like you We're know, you can learn down. from everyone. Definitely, hundred percent. And I, I don't ever like separate, you know, where I pick my knowledge from. I, I listen to everybody, but this guy in particular, I I point him out because this guy has a name, <laughs> Luis Martinez. Um, he. He's he's working for for a company that has a lot of structure, and I think as a small business, the things um, that, the things that we lack are structure. I made the structure. They Ooh. have zero structure. So just clarify wherever wherever it came from, the structure is there. Was there, and he liked that it because that's what you wanted. Yeah. Because based on the other conversation we had before, that that was part of it. So real quick, as you're going through this phase, if I may, financially and all these other things, was it? What you were doing now, you're you're starting to get some 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 gigs. You're you're bettering yourself, your craft. You're getting all that. Was that all just you felt fulfilled at that point than you did? What other jobs that you were maybe getting paid more, maybe had more days off, maybe had more time for I don't know. Um, to to add to that, I think the dealership was the only place where I haven't felt that fulfillment. Mm. I every job I've ever had uh, before that. Um, I've always gone all the way in and I feel like when I'm learning something, I feel really fulfilled. So learning, you know, f having that feeling that I'm doing something with myself mm -hmm. gives me that fulfillment. So, so it, so it is doesn't, it, is it progress? Like any type so at of this point, at this time you're starting to feel that you're starting to feel better for yourself. You're starting to feel more fulfilled as these months are going by that you're not, not just with photography. I mean like every job I've had before this. Correct. 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 No, yeah. I'm just saying at this point where you're learning more, you're taking classes, you're going to um, learn more. You're feeling more, you're feeling more fulfilled. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the things that um, um, I'll just use the word that turns me on is like wanting to learn something new. Oof. I, I get, there, there's something about me that is just curious. And I think that's that's like a child trait that I never got rid of that has uh, helped me, you know, I like in, that. In, in my life. And, and that goes into like work, finances, philosophy, um, you know, religion. Like it, it's just that that feeling of uh, not of being of learning one thing every single day for me is is fulfilling i agree i agree i like that and i like that because now that you said that it's been since your childhood i think that that that, that helped me understand why i'm also very very curious and some people are like ray why are you always just curious or wanting to learn more like why do you care 
you know, one thing that I do is when, when we go out to eat or whatever, uh, the waiter or whoever's there, I ask them questions. Who are you? What are you doing? What do you, you know? I mean, like, why do you do that? I'm just curious. Like, who is this person? Like, what are they? What can nosy. I learn from them? That's not nosy. No pun intended. <laughs> I think everybody is curious in their own way. Everybody? I think so. It's a human characteristic that is in embedded in, in our in our. Psyche. Is there a difference between nosy and curious? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe the maybe they have certain uh, attributes that are um, correlated. Would one matter if you're trying to just know to know and know to learn? Know to know and know to learn. I mean, they're the same thing. Are they? Yeah, if you're knowing something new, then you're learning. Like, for instance, I un cheese me, right? And, like, that's not going to add nothing to me. But I'm like, hey, what happened? Or... Yeah. You know, this person is a business owner, and I'm like, hey, tell me about yourself. Like, what happened? Like, a kangaroo can't jump backwards. I don't know why I need to know that, <laughs> but I know that. Is that what you're talking about? They're just useful knowledge. Yes. There is a book that I, I learned saw something new. 1001 <laughs> Useless Facts. Hold on. And I was like, I need this book. Yeah. Because sometimes you're going to have a conversation that comes up with this category of this topic, and you want to be the guy that one ups everybody (laughs) 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 say i know this fact right 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 because i know that i read it (laughs) they can't jump backwards yeah everybody learned something new today because of their thick tail which acts as a counterbalance to their front facing movements yeah that's awesome things like that that are very important (laughs) <laughs> but, see, but that's to me that's more interesting than Doña Rosa le puso el cuerno a Don Pedro and like those, right? those are also interesting because you find out about um, a person that you had maybe up here and then that you thought that they were oh, a certain man. thing and then you realize that they're not that is true because and that's happened before where, where I do have people at a at a high level right and then I find out who they really are and I'm just like but what does that mean what does what mean? It doesn't mean anything. I have it doesn't have to mean level. anything. Correct. Oh, so, that, for yeah. instance, oh, go ahead. You go ahead. So, for instance, like let's say um, I'm just got a random because I don't want to share cheese mess on on live thing, but um, you know, let's say it's a, a business owner, right? Just drop and names, dude. No, definitely not. Cancel then, beat up probably. <laughs> I'm have to fight. Anyways, um, let's say it's a business owner or someone that has businesses, and I'm like, man, this guy's smart. He's done this, he's had house, you know, whatever it might be, right? And then I find out maybe that he's cheated on his wife or, you know, he really, he's, he sells drugs or he's part of this other organization or all his money is dirty or then I would bring him down, right? Because you're no longer up there. Yeah, you might still have all this, but then you're not the person I want to follow no more because uh, all I won't learn from you. I don't think you should anchor people to their worst moments. Like that's true. Like too. yes, it is We've true. All had bad, Correct. Moments. It is true, but um, I think as long as the it's person true, has learned but, from it. But if there's no redemption, or if there's there, no change, that's that's what I was. Yeah. Um, so that's. I mean, that's, whatever your perspective is on that person doesn't really matter, right? Like whatever you. Think, yeah, they're still gonna yeah. do their thing. But you th- said but, I was a horrible person earlier. But it also it matters because that's a, that's the only perspective that you have. Mm-hmm. So, <clears> these <throat> things are just social dynamics. Right. You see this Correct. person that um, that you think it's moral. I think that's what Ray was talking about. And then um, it could be like a pastor or a preacher, anybody Correct. like this that has that moral authority. And then you understand that or like the Catholic Church. And then you understand that there's been years of like things that have been happening. You're like, you know, your mind kind of just starts conflicting. Canceled. Yeah. No, Catholics. <laughs> you start conflicting your mind, and that that's interesting. I right. think that's just a social. And again, I, I don't hold that against everybody, right? Like for instance, that example, not all Catholics are or or right. Pe- right, but it's just like, I guess what I would say would be like, let's say you, I hold you to a hand standard, and then I no, figure out things. You're no, I'm no longer gonna invite you to the house, right? Because I don't want <laughs> my kids or my group of friends or my circle to learn things from you because you're not that person anymore maybe i'll sit down and have a coffee and talk business but then after that we're done yeah so that's where we circle back to what we said earlier like there's certain there are certain people that um you invite for certain things and don't for others uh but just you know just that's so hard sorry how do you 
identify that with people getting their feelings hurt, right? If if we have a dinner or a outing, right, and I'm at you and Jesse, and then we don't invite Luis because he's going to want to pay for everything, right? How do we not invite him when we know he's going to find out and then he's going to get... Mm, so I think it just depends. Go ahead. That's where I think it. you should know the people that you hang out with. Right. So you should know that he's mature enough to understand that he doesn't have to attend every single outing. Right. And so if like he's, right now, like we didn't invite Jesse, right? Mm-hmm. Because the show was about Joba film, right? Was, well, that that that's different. How is that different? Because this is this is with with an objective, right? It's, if so, we get if we get out of work and it's personal, to me, it's two different things. To me, this is this is personal. To me, talking to people is personal. Personal. I mean, everything is personal. Everything is isn't personal. It? Isn't it? Everything is about you and your life. For instance, like this weekend when me, him, and Jesse are going to Austin and you you, you just found no. out. Yeah, I said no. No, but we didn't tell you last week when That's we planned okay. it. Because maybe it might be about hiking or it might be about something that I'm not interested you in. You don't like hiking? I mean, I like it, but it's not going to be like my thing, you know? Like, like we were talking about soccer, right? That we're going to form a team. Let's go. Know? Hey, guys, we're looking for soccer and players. We didn't invite Jesse because we know he doesn't play soccer. Right. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if there's a thing that we're all together in and if you don't bring it up, that's just a a dynamic of a friendship. Like, why wouldn't you bring it up if you're friends? Because people get their feelings hurt. But if if you are friends, Mm -hmm. why wouldn't you bring it up? So, see, in the last two years, why wouldn't you be transparent about something? In this year and a half that I've gone through this friend things, right? my, My circle is so small. It's a period. Right, triggered so. <laughs> immediately. The feminine, the, the feminist, the feminist are. are <laughs> anyway, so are you um, saying your friends are so bad that they behave badly for a week? I have no idea where that came from, but um, I, I, so I, to me, everybody's a friend. Like, oh, that's my friend. That's my friend. That's my friend. Right? So, like I, two years ago, everybody was my friend. And then there was a core group, right? Like a group message of twenty. Right, and then from that twenty, there's a core group a of big group. I've never like, had twenty I'm friends of, at a time. I'm out of guests in the podcast, and they're oh, not yeah. even my friends. No, yeah. So, so to me, everybody was friends. But now I understood, like, while I'm here, and thanks to Theo, um, you guys that have met Theo, like, what a friend really is, right? And what, I don't. What is that? What does that mean? Re- what like what you said, friend? a real friend would be, um, the plain and simple to me would be a real friend is someone you can be transparent regardless of, of feelings right like I, i'm gonna be blunt with you and tell you if you ask me what do you think about this i'm gonna tell you whether you like it or not i'm gonna be full blunt with you right um that's one thing and then i think one of the main things that was like a friend is someone that i i can count on no matter what right so at 2 a.m hey i'm in the hole i need you to come be here on my way you know like i don't know about that I don't know maybe, if that's a maybe, friend. Yeah, someone you can definitely count on, right? You can't count on anybody, I don't think. Oof. I don't think you can count on people like that. So if, if you're in a hole and you call Giovanni, hey, I need something, if, financial help, yep. support, whatever. He doesn't have to come through, and that's me being his friend. He doesn't have to come through. I, I think the understanding that I don't have to come through, but just we've built such a relationship that I would come through. Correct. But, and if but, he doesn't, I wouldn't hold but out of your context list there would be somebody you're gonna call yeah and i, w- and I would more hope than i would hope that they can come through but correct. I w- okay they don't have to but yeah. you have those friends yeah, yeah, that yeah. you're gonna right, know you're like right. yeah. out of 10 guys the chances of giovanni coming is yeah. a lot more than these right, guys so right, you're gonna yeah. reach out so mm-hmm. to me that that's what i meant right to yeah. compare to me everybody was my friend i know everybody right but i realized in the last two years that it's not like that right and then some of these like Knowing that I can't be blunt with you because your feelings are going to get hurt, then we're no longer friends, right? Because we're, we're still, f- see, that's the, the, I guess it's acquaintances and friends, right? Once I can't be blunt with you and I got to tiptoe around you, you've now become an associate and we're Why not. Why do you have to be blunt to people? Yeah, I think as a friendship, you have to understand each other's um, feelings and Maybe this person doesn't want to talk about this thing. Maybe it's a lot of pain and a lot of hurt. And maybe that's what you you get to. It's like, why do you feel offended when I talk about this? Oh, it's because I got hurt when I was this little or because, you know, I'm trying to do good, but I'm actually doing bad. 
And then you're like, oh, okay, then I won't talk about it. Correct. But if you ask me a blunt question, right? If you ask me about a childhood <clears throat> issue that I know you went through, right? And then you ask me, hey, what do you think about this situation? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like you said earlier, you're opening the door. I'm not just going to mm-hmm. attack you out of nowhere and be like, ah, well, like bring it that, up. That's what we, I think I understood. Is that no, you, I mean, being blunt, like. You were going to say your opinion about the, about the subject. To to yeah. add to add to that, I think we are horrible at um, communicating our ideas. Yeah, uh, a lot of us, you know, may have the right intentions, but it comes out the wrong way. So that's me. having having a moment to think about what you're gonna say, um, and this this can kind of go into like that that glass culture of like, oh, I have to think about everything for everyone. But I think there there's some um, there's some truth to that, and there's some reward that comes from thinking what you're gonna say before you say it, having the other person in mind. You have to understand who your friends are and how they react to certain things. I'm pretty sure you you found out very quickly who you can talk to like that, yes, and who you can't. And then so when you find that out, and then at one point you talk to them like that, and then they're offended. Now you're the bad guy. That's like. I thought we were at this point. Here's here's what I would say to that. You are the bad guy, and it's your fault for not knowing who they are. You assume they were your friends without even knowing who they are. You you assume you could talk to them a certain way, and you didn't know that. Correct. So Be- because I, you've talked like that before. I, I I don't I don't consider everyone I can talk to directly. Yes. You know, like just be straight up with people, my friends. Just because I can tell them the truth to their face. I think relationships have to be built um, for me to call you a friend. Like, I've had the same two friends for my whole life. For as long as I can remember, it's been Jesse and Luis. The, and, and contrary to what people would believe is, like, I'm an outgoing person. I talk to everyone. Right, right, right. But the, the core of it is I don't think I've had so more, th- more than three people that i talk to at a time in my whole life correct so at that point you know how you can talk to Luis, right Mm -hmm. and if you talk to him the way you've talked to him forever but at this point he gets upset and you cross the line even though you've you've said these certain things before and then he now is offended and now you're the bad guy so who i've gotten offended many times well that's that's okay (laughs) that's okay and i think that's where maturity comes into place it's like we have to understand that people change Mm-hmm. We have to understand that uh, people should should have the ability to think differently ten years from now, right? Then you know, than what they are today. So if if I say something, if he and he gets offended, and I consider him my friend, then I need to rethink what I said. And then you apologize, um, or you know, or like reword it, like, hey, if I offended you, my bad. But he's like, no, it's cool. Just just. Don't talk to me so, anymore. So that takes maturity from people. It's like, Both sides. Uh, yeah, accepting that I I said something that um that upset him, and having having the the courage enough to say, "Hey, bro, sorry that I that I said that to you. I, I don't know what." And then listening to see why he why he got offended or why he thought the way the things that he thought. So it's it's a lot of um. A lot of like maturity that comes from like you know having relationships and a friend a friendship is a relationship. Uh, it's a two way street. You know right, you have to right. you have to say things and then you have to listen. And I think the where we have a big downfall is we oftentimes have good intentions, but we have we do a really crappy job at expressing how we feel. We also live in a culture where um, it's it's especially in the in the men culture is like. I'm going to do my own thing and I'm going to do it my way and just deal with it. Forget everybody else. If anybody um, does it a different way than I do it, you know, they can go. They're doing it wrong. Yeah. Especially (coughs) men and their Mm -hmm. egos and our egos, they could say. Um, Like if if I'm going to do it solo, I'm going to do it alone. You know, my problems are my problems, my my all this is mine 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 i'm gonna do it myself i'm gonna get my guns and myself and everybody if anybody comes in my yard and you know it's a lot of that culture going on um and we build these walls uh for protection against feelings against letdowns against 
physical in, intruders, you know, and and again spiritual. Like we don't say our problems out loud, you mm-hmm. know, spiritually and and the struggles that we have. We don't. Who who? Which man have you met that that says things this way? They they tend to be uh, labeled as weak. Right. Correct. So. That, that's um, I don't, I don't, in in certain places, the Hispanic culture is like that. So that's that's where I was saying, you know, like it's is it not? Mm, like you can't. I don't think, I've, I've, I, I don't as, think as, I've ever been labeled. Uh, not me personally, but I don't think I've ever seen labels uh, because there isn't people that way. I, as a man, like I've and, never met a man that I have now. You know, with the men that I that I hang around with, and then that church with the men groups that we have. Uh, we're able to build a bond that you know that isn't about um, toughness. It is toughness, oh, okay. but it's not macho. the. It is macho. It is strength. It is power, um, but it doesn't mean that you can't um, talk about certain things. It's iron, iron sharpens things. iron. What right. you were talking about this morning is like we are we are here to build each other up, not to break each other down. Right. So you can you can tell me about. You know your your worst moments, and I can sit here and listen and tell you how um, I I would personally handle this. But I'm never coming at a place of I'm I'm you know like making fun of you or or making you feel any less of a man just because you're going through this at this moment. I forgot I forgot where I was going with everything. <laughs> Um, uh, it's just you know we were talking about culture and like um why why men may he said they get oh i said they started with the whole friendship conversation right right that there is i mean maturity is the biggest thing that's ever changed my life personally maturity being able to deal with the responsibility of my actions and what i've done and saying okay i did these things now i have to figure out how to move on with those things that i've done Correct. Either errors, or either um, decisions, either problems that I've created for myself, either things that I've carried on for a lot of years. Um, you know, it's until I decided that it's up to me that that's whenever that maturity changed and I could see that on, in, in others as well. Like he said, like his, if his friend didn't uh, want to be mature enough, that's that's not on, on, on Ray. Yep. You know, and it should just let that go because... You can't deal with somebody else's maturity. They have to deal with it on their Correct. own. Correct. I hope they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> because go, see, like with things like that, I don't, I don't get, um, I don't get petty with things like that either, right? So once that happened, I was like, all right, cool. I, I, you know, I sent the last message. Hey, I offended you. My bad. Blah 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 blah. And then I was left in red. I was like, all right, like cool. I, I keep going, right? So just tell us what it was. Hmm? We'll be the judge of it. And uh, right, and I think. So even, what happened? Even, <laughs> are you gonna say? Nah. I, even like after like the the relationship, any relationship could always be reestablished. <coughs> you know, if you if you come back to a transparent moment and say, "Look, this is how I acted, and this is why I did that." Um, you, think you know, so? I was really upset. It just depends how you build that relationship back up. Yeah. Same with marriage. Same with anything. Like, a marriage can always be fixed, and and. And, uh, think so after cheating yeah i think so uh, i feel like sometimes we we do that for ourselves so you feel mm-hmm. guilty of something and you go back and you say oh i, I did this and, and this is where you have There's things that you do for you, and there's things that you really do uh, because you want to. Because you're you're thinking about the other person. Not Correct. Yourself. So, is it bad if you do it out of guilt? I don't think anything. Well, right, like, hey, I'm sorry, but be- I just because feel at guilty. that point, not because I'm sorry, but I just feel bad. So, I'm just, or, I don't think you should put a negative uh, emotion, negative moral, so much pressure on feeling guilty. Like it's a feeling, you know. It's a feeling that you're going to feel no matter what. Like, if you don't feel guilty, then you don't have remorse and you don't have, like, certain things that he, normal humans would feel. And I think that's what some psychopaths Correct. feel. It's mm-hmm. like they don't feel but certain just, things. Yeah. 
that's why they're classified as psychopaths is because they don't feel certain emotions and they do certain things like serial killers or some you know some certain classifications of people don't don't feel certain emotions and it's okay to say oh i feel guilty like there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with feeling bad feeling you know certain feelings like those are just natural human uh emotions that you're going to feel a certain time and place to go into depth a little bit i stopped it did i stop it looks like it no it's still live no what the? to to go into depth a little bit on that <laughs> um what happened the i feel like sometimes uh people can use certain emotions for manipulation too oh yeah, definitely 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. i mean manipulations big the best way to get what you want and so kids are really good at that oh yeah, yeah. Make, kids make yourself a victim um you know bring that guilt in um that doesn't get by with me <laughs> yeah me, none of that me stuff either um sometimes i feel bad but weakness yeah he just told me how he felt, and I called him weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it might be... Uh, Is that how it works as a friend? No. no. That, that's <laughs> just <laughs> stabbing somebody. Yeah, it's just... No. no. That was the opposite of what we just covered? Correct. Good. I think, that's I think why I, that was the point. I think there's something behind exp saying, oh, weakness. Like, what does that mean, right? Are you letting yourself be manipulated? Are you letting yourself be uh, lied to? Um, yeah. There's a lot behind these, like, short um statements of like oh you're weak oh you're not strong enough oh right. deal with it oh work harder you know there's a lot to unpack like words can mean so many different things like that's what they are it's, it's they okay. mean so many different things it's, it's okay to be weak mm -hmm. like one word can mean a, a thousand things in spanish and english mm -hmm. right so annoying just just and the way you say it that's why the way you interpret it where where are you using it is like Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Like, híjole, 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 híjole. That was very random. Right? So it's like, especially in Spanish, like there's memes about it. Mm -hmm. Pero so, so it's up to us to to ask questions. Like, what do you mean by that? That's that's where why we touched on we do a horrible job at expressing Correct. what we really feel. Especially if you do it over text. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should never do that over text. It's the only way we do it, especially when you can't spell like me. So, yeah, it's um, I feel like it's a it's a cultural thing. It's a um, a thing that how we were raised. But at some point, like we touched on earlier, we have to be responsible for what we say, how we say it. And if we want to do something about it. Right. Because a lot of times I've, I've heard people say that um, uh, Vic people will victimize themselves just because they want the attention, not because they want to do anything about it. So they will tell you their sob story because they want you to listen to them, not because they actually want to change it. See, I think social media and things like that have made that a lot better and for people to do, right? Like people want to, you know, like you, you put your story out there and then people are like, oh, I'm sorry for you, this and that. So you start, okay, people like this, so then they're just going to continue to share their sob story because now they're getting the attention Right? No. I think we all want attention. Mm -hmm. Nah. You're I doing this for attention. Me? I'm doing this because I like this. For attention. Right. No. And I think there's nothing wrong with wanting attention. No. Nope. Um, because that makes you feel special. That makes you feel validated. That makes you feel a lot of things. I don't agree. So you don't want any kind of attention from your wife, from your kids? Well, I don't do this for attention. There's certain things I do for attention, and there's certain things that I do because I want to do, okay, so regardless then of, of then what... Let me move the camera so it just gets you. Okay, so then it's wrong. Okay, we were wrong, but I'm, I'm talking about in general, everybody wants attention. So you're saying, no, not everybody, but in general, everybody. You're talking about this specific, specific podcast. Specific thing, yeah. Yeah, so you said, no, okay, I'm going to take your word for it because... Uh -huh. I'm saying, okay, I'm not going to call you a liar. I'm not going to debate you about what, I will. About what you're Let's saying. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying everybody wants attention, even kids. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But it's like whenever you are growing up, it's like how are you uh, attracting this attention? You know, are you manipulating for it? Are you screaming for it? Are you doing all these things for it? And as a parent, are you providing the right type of attention? Mm -hmm. um, and then that goes into the future, and then now you're on social media or um, – wanting attention because you were raised 
the ro- not the wrong way, but you were raised a certain way where you got attention the negative way. Or you're currently not getting it at home, but you get it through social media, right? I mean, you're going to get attention no matter what, yeah. somehow. You yeah. Know, n- not everybody. So, everybody to not everybody, because, I don't know, there's some, some people, people. Yeah, some people, in general. <laughs> I think to a certain degree, everybody wants some sort of attention. Um, attention or validation? Same um, thing? Same difference? No. Validation is... Um, Be proud of me. Is is you getting in front of somebody and dressing up really nice and expecting them to say something to you um, and they don't say it so you feel bad. Uh, that's horrible. Because you're putting that, you're putting your self, whatever, on somebody else. So, that, that so I did, did I did it for me or did I do it for you? Correct. And if you didn't give it to me, are you bad because you didn't give it to me or am I bad for expecting you to give it to me? So that's seeking much. validation. Hmm? That's too much. Seeking validation. And I feel like that's, that goes into like self-esteem, you know, like... Uh, and I guess we can kind of add on to that right now because of social media, which is veering off from what I do for a living. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> this yeah, is what you do for a living. This is what I do for a living. So, I understand it. Because you give people that through your photographies and through your videos, and yeah. this is why people reach. You. So, w- one of the things that I, I, I can add to is um, when, when people, you know, let's say I'll, I'll have uh, people hire me to do certain things. It's because um, because they want attention. And they want attention on their brand. They want attention for their business. And that's not a bad thing. And you, you know how to give it to them based um, on what they want. Yeah, so that's where it, it's my job to ask questions. Like, what is this for? It's, if it's a maternity shoot, I know it's got to be more personal to who, who the person is. If it's, um, you know, for a brand, I need to understand what the brand is, what they stand for who their core audience is, um, what their ideas are, listen to that, and then also give my suggestions based on my expertise. Mm-hmm. What, is everything all right? Because I'm putting up a comment, but it has nothing to do with anything. I'm like, what did I do that for? <laughs> this is live, by the way. Yes. So, yeah, so, so you focus on making sure that people get the right attention through your photography. And videos. And videos. Right. So what's, so what's next for you to wrap things up? Um, what's next for me is, it's, we were talking about this, I, the attending that first workshop opened my eyes to the idea of teaching. Oh, that's right. So, um, I, I think for me, it, it's going to be in the future. I don't know how soon or how, how far it is from now, but I want to teach what I do. Uh, I really enjoy this. I love it. There's, there's a fulfillment of having an idea in my mind. And then seeing it when it's completed. Now, I don't know if you if you can relate to this with your design, but when somebody tells you an idea and then you you can share something physical, or when you actually see something hung up, that brings a certain satisfaction that I think a lot of people get through different things. But that that does it for me. Seeing that that completed final product um, adds adds some fulfillment to me, and I think that's one thing that I would like to share with the world. How can they have an idea and know what tools to use and how to get to the point of uh, completing that thing that they have in their head and having something physical to show for it? How can uh, people reach you on uh, social media? So on social media, I'm everywhere as Jova Film, uh, or my name is Giovanni Suniga. They can add me on there. Um, uh, I, if you guys want to leave the, the link to my my Instagram is where usually where I'm more... Um, more active but um we'll, reality we'll put it on the captions yeah for sure i'll leave a link below too all right well this wraps up this episode uh we'd like to thank uh our sponsor melting pot smoke shop cbd and vape and what else smoke and smoke and sm- yeah <laughs> he's opening up a second store um in montgomery so stay tuned for that yes very big uh moment hashtag hustle we'll, we'll have to talk about that next time no sir it's not hustle it's just work Peace.